Hi, I'm Joe. And I have 15 minutes, but I want to thank Tim for uh, running short. So if I go over, um, it won't interfere with the schedule, but I will try to keep it short. And I'm going to talk about emoji Twitter bots and uh, procedural generation within that arena and uh, the possibility of creating game-like experiences on the internet. Uh, I have a lot of these uh, mostly Star Trek related parody Twitter accounts. If you are, in, yeah, see someone who's doing the home alone face because they're like, oh my god, it's Riker Googling. Uh, they, some of these have like 100,000 or 80,000. Thank you, I've never had an applause for these before. Uh, and uh, so these uh, are a lot of work because I write them manually. And, um, but I'm a programmer and I wanted to get into uh, getting that same kind of high that you get from uh, notifications on Twitter, but having it be done for me, uh, rather than having to think of everything. So I looked at uh, Tiny Starfield by Katie Rose Pipkin, and it has 100,000 followers, and it just makes pictures of stars, not even, they're just little dots. <laughs> and they're like this. And uh, every few hours, it's a random assor assortment of dots, and people love it because uh, Twitter is a nightmare. And <laughs> this is not a nightmare, it's something else. And you can be like, oh, I don't have to think about everything in the world that's broken. I can just look at the sky for one second. And, uh, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. So what if you used emoji? Um, and then I started looking around and I saw that people do. Uh, this is Tiny Gardens, uh, author unknown. And um, I like it, but it's, there's some things like, it's got these, uh, these like bundles of flowers from a store sitting out in the forest and, and there's like this tree that's been shrunk down. And so there was things about it that I was like, I, I'd like to add an animal, I'd like to do some different things. Um, so that's interesting to me. And then uh, there's Noah's uh, Tiny Dungeons, which uh, I was gonna say, I think he's at this conference and then when I was writing the slides, I was like, oh, he's the organizer. Right, well, <laughs> worth mentioning, this is the most roguelike of all of the emoji bots on Twitter. And uh, if you click from here to its bio, to its website, you can play these in JavaScript. Um, what you cannot do is play them on Twitter, which is kind of what I'm moving towards at the end of this talk. Uh, let's see, so then I started making some, and the first ones that I've made so far are Emoji Aquarium and Emoji Meadow. Emoji Aquarium looks like this. Uh, it was basically, I was looking at Tiny Starfield and I was thinking, um, what else in the emoji set would look proper when arranged like this, where things are above each other, but you're looking at them from the side. It doesn't totally match anything. Roguelikes do look like that, but they don't look like a top-down or a three-quarter angle or a front angle of reality. They look like a, you know, a, a weird hodgepodge of looking at for things from the side and looking at things from the top. But an aquarium is something you look at from the side and fish actually hover above each other. So this is um, a grid but I added white space to destroy the appearance of the grid uh, because I want the fish to look more organic. And I have a, a design for an algorithm I haven't implemented yet to make them clump into schools and uh, have just you know a percentage chance that they're gonna be closer to other fish, uh, probably of their own kind. Um, and then there's, uh, there's various more rare elements like a crab or something at the bottom or something else swimming like a squid to give a little prize. Like it, it's every three hours there's some fish and some plants, but then there's something surprising and people are always saying, I want more squid. And I'm like, I know you do, that's the point. <laughs> You're not gonna get more squid, you're gonna wait for the squid. <laughs> so there's three fish types in the emoji set. Uh, there's the rare swimmers that I liked because I thought their size matched. Uh, the squid, the dolphin, the, um, the octopus, and the shark. There's, there's small sharks. And people are saying, always saying, can you add the whale? Can you? And I'm like, whales are big. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, and we have arguments on Twitter about this, which is great, because it's better than arguing about politics. And uh, then there's the rare bottom dwellers, the snail, the castle, and stuff. Uh, every, I don't know how many, there's, there's, you can look through the code to see the odds. Um, and then there's the super rare stuff like the die and the game controller, the junk that's, people are like, what? Um, and those come up every few days, there's one of those. Uh, and then there's just various different kinds of spaces. Uh, what I learned when I was trying to make all this was that emojis are monospaced, which is great, because you can use them no matter what platform they appear on, 
They are all the same width if you don't add any space, and you can make a grid if you want to. Unfortunately, there is no such thing as a space character that is the same width as uh, an emoji. There's the ideographic space. I talked to a lot of people on Twitter who had a lot of advice, and the ideographic space is, depending on the platform, slightly wider, slightly narrower, maybe the same. Uh, and then there's a few other spaces um, in different, from different languages and different uh, reasons why characters exist. None of them are quite the right width. So you cannot use white space if you want a grid of emoji that's perfectly aligned. Um, and then there's these other kinds of spaces which are just to make jitter between the fish so that they do not line up. And then uh, this is Emoji Meadow, where I was like, well, I like Tiny Gardens, I want to copy it, but I want to make it my way and uh, limit what kinds of plants show up, but also put some animals and start making it look like this is a place where something's happening. And uh, people actually really like when there's a green animal, a turtle or a snake, because they can't find it. So it's like, ooh, let me take a minute. Let me see if I can solve this tweet. Uh, and then here's a bunny in the corner, also hard to see, which is good. Um, then I was looking at these and I was like, you know what's, what I wish, if I could play this as a game or something, make it game-like, I wish that there were a path through the flowers that was made of grass that was easier to traverse than the flowers. So I was like, okay, let me write an algorithm for that. And some of the time there will be an animal that will always start on the right because all emoji animals face left. And uh, although I'm thinking of making them start at the top and bottom too, that seems okay. Uh, and then each animal should have a treat, which is not an animal. <laughs> so you know which one is the target and which one is the, uh, the, the, the predator. And they should have a path through the forest or through the flowers. And many people, many, many people say, ah, I thought this was a maze, but actually the bunny can just jump over the flowers. Ha ha, I gotcha. And I'm like, yes, they could jump over the flowers. Pretend that they're big flowers. Uh, what I didn't like was this spot here. That's the spot that kept happening that I was like, I wish I hadn't coded it that way. I wish that the path didn't touch a corner of another part of the path later on. And that was a bigger problem to solve the way I wrote the algorithm, the, the candidates for what is the next um, step in the path. Uh, and then eventually I did figure out how to solve that and then it doesn't happen anymore. And to me, that was a huge relief. I don't think anyone else cared, <laughs> but I was like, oh, I, can't, I don't have to look at those little corners anymore, thank God. Um, so now it's just, you know, lovely, uh, fully, I, like, really realized paths where there's no question that they can't cut through a corner. Uh, I thought about making it branch, but there's not much room. Although there's 280 now, so maybe. Uh, and uh, it actually generates a whole bunch of paths and discards most of them until it finds one that's long enough to, um, to, to look good, to look like it's filling a lot of the space, which was just the fastest way to make it do what I wanted, which is to make a big windy path. Um, it's still not a playable game, but it does make people stop and think about this situation from the point of view of the animal as a game, as a very simple game. Um, and then one of the things that I like about emoji and what I want to get you thinking about is that um, how many people here are coders? Yep, right. Uh, I won't ask who's not a coder, don't worry about it. Um, but the, uh, you're probably thinking about making games that are like roguelikes in some way, or right, like rogue in some way. And um, what's cool about social media, if it doesn't eat itself and get destroyed by management, is the, uh, that you get a different audience. You get people who don't have the patience to go download something and trust it and run it. Um, and yeah, you can write something in JavaScript on your web page, but you have to get them to your web page. So you get different audiences in different places. And if you're on Twitter, something just gets retweeted into your timeline, you find out about it and you go look at it, and there you, you can interact with it. Experience it in whatever way. And emoji are kind of like HTML mostly used to be in that it's platform dependent. Its appearance will change depending on what phone you're using or what computer you're using. And I kind of like that. Um, and I like that, like, I like uh, dark mode because I get migraines with too much light. Uh, but the default on Twitter is not. And 
it looks however you want it to look. Depends what platform you choose to use and whether you use night mode or not and how you zoom. Uh, and it's text. There's no image here, really, So from the point of view of the computer systems. So you could add more stuff. You can add polls under the, underneath this, which Twitter doesn't currently let you do a poll in an image. I don't know why. But you can't yet. So you could add a poll under this, which is something that I'm getting to. And uh, just a bit of a scrap of code from the meadow. Um, in similar spirit to the fishes, there's the, the grass types, the flower types, and the animals. And then there's the chance of the animal to treat mapping, in which case the, uh, these are the list of animals that have distinctive non-animal treats to go eat. The bacon is an animal, but it's not a living animal. And um, so how do you make a Twitter bot? If I have whetted your appetite to consider this, uh, it's not that hard. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Depends on your background, what languages you're comfortable with. It's mostly just learning an API, uh, someone else's library that touches the Twitter API. And uh, this, the simplest place to start is botwiki.org, uh, which is a nice collection of bots, as well as a bunch of tutorials and links to resources. And there's a Slack channel, the, the bot maker Slack, cha Slack channel, which is very friendly. And um, the simplest starting point for most people is uh, basically zero coding. It's cheapbotsdonequick.com, which is uh, an implementation, uh, uses an implementation of Kate Compton's tracery language, which is a storytelling, um, procedurally generated storytelling system where you feed it a bunch of possibilities for phrases or for characters or for sets of characters and then there's symbols within there and I won't get into the whole thing, but it's, uh, it makes a, you can make it have a very wide variety of randomization based on your criteria. And a lot of Twitter bots are made with cheap bots done quick. It's free and it can handle replies so you can have interactivity with people. And then there's glitch.com, which everybody in the bot maker Slack is always talking about, but I haven't tried yet because I like doing things the hard way because I'm used to it. But uh, I'm told that glitch.com is the easy way and that it is a platform made by Fog Creek Software that made Stack Overflow and Trello that is designed to make it faster and easier to code simple things like bots. And uh, I have a background in AWS and Java, so I use AWS and Java. But, um, and that's because I'm a control freak with grandiose ideas. But, uh, uh, but glitch.com is, is worth looking at. But of course, as a programmer, most of you are probably first thinking of leaning on the thing you already know how to do. That was what I ended up doing. Uh, so I use AWS Lambda, which is pretty great. It's free. Um, Amazon Web Services has a lot of so-called so free services that are not free after the first year, and you forget and then you get a bill, and it's very disappointing. So I made a list of which ones are free with no time limit, and all of the ones that, um, that I need, DynamoDB for storage of state, and um, Lambda for running programs, and then uh, cloud, um, the, the, one, the monitoring one, I forgot, for, um, that does the scheduling for the every three hours or whatever. Uh, and if you keep everything within their reasonable limits, it's free and it handles Java or Node.js or Python or C Sharp. And um, let's see, what's next? So I live stream on Twitch uh, coding sessions. I live stream a variety of different things, but I have a lot of bots still in the works that I tend to just turn on my stream when I'm gonna code them. And they, um, I should be looking down. The uh, so because I have this grid system and I've solved a lot of the problems that I wanted to solve with these uh, static bots that just have output, I wanted to have interactivity because to me social media is a game and I, I go there for the game-like experience but with the social aspect of knowing that there's real people. And uh, with Twitter polls, there's a lot you can do to make things interactive. Uh, how am I on time? Uh, it's, it's now time for me to start my talk. So. Um, but I'm almost done. Uh, so uh, I have an almost, I have about half finished implementation of Tetris that'll be playable by uh, the community um, and with emoji and the emoji set that will be used will change um, periodically because there's no absolute squares in emoji but there are different symbols that look close enough to squares. Minesweeper, Battleship, uh, RPGs that are like Rogue or Ultima 
uh, Othello and Connect Four are all totally reasonable things to do in, on Twitter. And some of them are even easier now because of 280. And uh, let's see, yeah, questions? Do we have time for question? Eh-ish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have time for a few questions while I switch over the slides. Yes. Um, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Uh, Britta is going to bring around the mic. Drew, can you put on the title screen so I can switch the slides? All right. Any questions? Hi. Um, when you're talking about implementation for actual interaction... Raise your, raise your hand. Hi, I'm over here. Okay, hi. Sorry, too close. Uh, <laughs> when you're talking about implementation for actual like games, yeah. uh, you talked about polls. Could you uh, elaborate on like mechanics and also like maybe the idea of using polls except uh, versus like a direct message system? Sure. Uh, yeah, so there's... Um, I started out thinking of Minesweeper and thinking it would just be the first thinking it was going to be like threads where one person will make a choice and it will branch and they'll just follow their game because they'll reply to the tweet with a, a command like dig at A4 or flag at A4 and then that would become the new, um, br the branch for them to play and that seemed like ni a nightmare because it's going to branch into a whole bunch of different states. Um, so then I just decided, well, I'll probably just have people reply and then whoever replies first, they did the thing. Did they break this? Did they did they lose the game for everyone? Maybe, um, but it's a community effort, and they can all bungle it, and that'll just be the next tweet. Um, so it'll be whoever comes first will do the next move. Uh, that's um, that's with replies. With direct message, I guess you could do a whole chat thing and have each person have their own game going in direct message. But to me, that defeats the point of Twitter, which is public and is a, a group shared experience. But with polls, you're limited to four options. So it, you have to find situations where there are only four options or where it's reasonable to limit it to four. Tetris is one of those. You can go left, right, rotate, or down. And um, then there's situations in like a roguelike. If you had an emoji roguelike and you wanted to go north, south, east, west, those are your options. You're never gonna do anything but move unless you come across an object or a wall where you can't go in that direction or there's something better to do than move, then you'd have to decide what are the four options that are the most interesting right now and make it a choose your own adventure. That's basically what it is. It's a choose your own adventure with a maximum of four options and you have to programmatically decide what are the best options now, but no, don't get in a loop. Make sure they can always get away from, you know, look at the chest. Uh, someday, get away from the chest. Don't stay there forever. Um. All right, Jim, and then we're going to move on because I want to save some time for later. No, that's fine. <laughs> hey, I'll be so, around. Oh, yeah. So you, Twitter as the medium, have you thought about how that would affect having two bots play against each other, like Battleship or something? And how does Twitter make that interesting or bad or good, or what would it be like? Uh, would it be interesting for bots to play against each other? I don't know. I mean, that's a performance. It's a... Um, that, that you could script and it would be this, a very similar experience for the, for the audience. Um, the whole point of it for me is to make people feel included and so it's not just um, an output from a system that's like art, which is what these things, the, the things that I showed you are, they're just art. But for people to participate, I want them to impact what happens next and to feel like they're part of it. Even if they're just one of 100 people who are voting, it's something. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um,